Hello and welcome back to Sword of Strategy and another episode of Archetype Explained. So this time we're going to be covering Subterror, uh, mostly with a focus on Subterror Guru-like control. But uh, I will go over all the ones that are not played as well because there's not too many of them and they all share a very similar effects. So it will be fairly quick. Uh, I'm going to start with the big monsters and then move into the smaller monsters. Um, before we start, just want to plug a giveaway I'm doing on the channel for 50 sub milestone. Um, if you want to enter that, there's a video about it on my channel. You'll see it in the last maybe five videos. Um, it's going until Saturday and you can win 25 euro on Steam or if you want 25 euro for an online card shop of your choice. So yeah, why not enter that? It'll only take you a minute. Um, and yeah, that is kind of that. So I guess we'll just start straight away. Um, first guy, Ultra Mathis. Uh, flip, you can change all other face-up monsters in the field face on the defense position. You can only use this effect once per turn. So all the big ones have a flip effect. And then they all share the second effect, so I will not read this from now on, so pay attention here I suppose. When a face-up monster you control is flipped face down, if you control no face-up monsters, so you kind of have to flip your only monster face down, you can special summon this card from your hand in defense, and then once per turn you can change this card face down defense position, so he can set himself up for a flip pretty much. Um, yeah, they all have that second effect, so when you flip a monster you control face down and it's the only monster you have, you can summon it from the hand. They all have that, okay? So, his first effect is a, a Book of Eclipse, kind of, once per turn. Okay, next guy. Uh, Subterra Behemoth Spiliogeist. Uh, flip, you can target one monster on the field, change it to face-up attack position, if it's in defense position, and change its attack to zero. Um, yeah, so it's it's not a bad one, I guess, but it's not amazing either. It, doesn't, it does target, so... I don't know, it's alright though, it doesn't destroy, so it's good removal, I suppose, but yeah. Uh, you can only use the effect of this once per turn. Next guy, Stalagmo. Uh, he's probably one of the best ones, to be honest. If you were playing a bigger uh, amount of the big guys, this guy would be one that I would play. Um, numbers, though, I'm not really sure, because I've never really tried playing it with the big guys. Uh, so his flip effect is, you can discard a sub terror monster, and if you do, draw two cards. You can only use the effect of this once per turn. Pretty solid, I think. Um, next guy, uh, Volturic. Uh, Voltelluric, sorry. Uh, you can target one set monster your opponent controls, take control of it until the next end phase. You can only use the effect of this once per turn. Next guy, uh, Phosphoro Glacier. Uh, you can send one card from your deck to the graveyard. Send one card, that's pretty cool. You can only use the effect of this guy once per turn. Next one now, a Maestrix. This is the one that is probably the most, is the most competitive one, not probably, and is the one that actually sees play. Um, in competitive lists. Not every deck will play this, but so it's one or zero depending on personal preference. The special summon effect they all possess class class fuck's sake. But they all possess clashes with pot of dualities, no special summon for the rest of the turn effect, or this turn, whatever it is. Um so some players don't play it, some play players do. Uh his flip effect is you can target monster your opponent controls, banish it. You can only use the effect of this once per turn. So the banishing is really strong because you slow the game down to a pace where Doing this once per turn and most of the time on your turn and your opponent's turn is crippling. Like so, yeah, he is actually really good. I I like him. I would at least test this before you decide to cut it. Uh, and then the last two, which don't see any play, are uh, Behemoth Dragosweri. Dragosweri. Uh, you can activate this effect this turn. Sub terror cards you control cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects. You can only use this once per turn. And then the last one is Behemoth Stygostracken. Stygokraken. Fuck me, their names are annoying. Alright, flip. Target set card. Your target set cards on the field equal to the number of sub terror behemoth monsters you control. Destroy them, you can only use the effect of this once per turn. Which will probably only be. Like, if you're. Probably only be one, but if you're playing this guy, you'll probably play more of these, so a max of two, seeing as one can get set, and then this could summon from the hand, and then you could. I don't know if you'd even be able to flip these two up, to be honest. I don't know. I'd say a max of two, anyway. Alright, now we're getting into the more competitive cards. I'll keep him here, and then I'll just clear all these. If you want to if you want to test those, you can. Just look up Subterra, but I'm going to delete them from here just to keep this a bit uh, cleaner. Easier on my own eyes. Anyway, uh, Subterra Guru. This guy is what made this deck really quite strong, to be honest. Um, he's really good. He's kind of the heart, soul, heart and soul of the deck, so... Uh, flip, you can add a sub terror card from your deck to your hand, except for a Guru. So that sub terror card, you can add any of the traps, any of the spells, any of the monsters, except their field spell, which doesn't isn't called sub terror anything, it's called the hidden city, okay? 
which is a bit of a pity, but also I can see that being a bit dumb. But anyway, uh, seeing as field spell is actually really strong. Uh, next effect, you can target face up monster on the field, change it to change that monster and this card face down defense position. Uh, this is a quick effect to control another sub terror card. You can only use the effect of this once per turn. Each effect of this once per turn. So, a search sets an opponent's monster and himself face down. Uh, so he's ready to flip again on the opponent's turn for another plus, which is pretty crazy. And then if there's another face up sub terror card on the field, then uh, you it's a quick effect. So you can do it on the opponent's turn. The interruption is pretty annoying and you plus a lot off him. Uh, again, for the quick effects thing, if you have another sub terror card, this doesn't count. So yeah. Next card, one that you will probably all, nearly always search off Guru is sub terror Fiendus. Fiendus is really strong. You'll hear it now anyway if you don't know. Uh, during another player's turn, when your opponent activates card or effect, you can send this card from your hand or field, by the way, or field, to the graveyard, target sub terror monster you control. Negate the activation of the card, okay? Then change the targeted sub terror monster you control uh, to face down defense position. You can only, um, this, I'll explain this again in a bit because you kind of need to know the field spell. Maybe I should read the field spell next, actually. Uh, you can target, this is another uh, on field effect she has then. You can target face of monster you control, change the face on defense position, and if you do, special summon a sub terror monster from your hand or graveyard in face up or face down defense. You can only use each effect of this once per turn. So, yeah, it's pretty, this is pretty good because she can. Basically, because you can normal summon her, use it to bring back a guru from grave if you have something else on the field, like let's say Nemesis Archer, for example. So you can bring back your guru if it's been removed, and then uh, she can still use her negate anything effect while she's on the field. So it is pretty good. Now, so you might be confused with this because what you do is, let's say so far we only know these two effects. So what you do is set him, and then you would end your turn, we'll say, for example. Then she says, uh, target the sub terror, change it to face down defense. So, would you normal summon this in attack mode and use this? Then, no. What you'll do is basically, I'll change the order of this, right? I'll read Hidden City now. It's pretty, uh, pretty great card to be honest, especially in this deck. So, when this card is activated, I'll go through the whole combo again because what I just said is probably a bit, little confusing for anyone who's never played this. Um, when this card is activated, you can add a sub terror monster from your deck to your hand. Once per turn, you can change a face down defense sub terror monster you control to face up attack position. Once per turn, when an opponent's monster declares an attack, you can change a face down defense position sub terror monster you control to face up attack or defense position. You can only, and then you can negate the attack. You can only use this once per turn. So, one card is in your hand. It's a hidden city. Okay, activate hidden city. Add guru. You can set guru, and then use this. Change one face down defense position. Sub terror monster you control to face up attack or defense position. So you flip up your sub terror guru, search your fiendess, and then you can. What's this? The second effect of this is set again, right? Oh no, that's the attack one, right? So now he is in face up attack position, okay? You've uh, searched your off one card, you've gotten guru out in the field, you've gotten a search off him, uh, and now you have fiendess in hand. Opponent's turn, they do something, we'll say, okay? Let's say it's Rigeki, okay? Uh, during either player's turn, when your opponent activates a card or effect, you can send this card from your hand or field to the graveyard target sub terror monster you control, negate the activation, and if you do, uh, change the targeted sub terror monster to face down defense position. So then, now your sub terror guru has been set again, ready to search, and uh, she's been discarded. You've negated the regeki, and all of that was off of just this one card. So this card is pretty ridiculous in that case. Now for the other, the next part of its effect. Um, once per turn, when an opponent's monster declares an attack on, say, your set guru, that now all you have left is your hidden city and guru, uh, you can change one face down defense sub terror monster you control to face up attack or defense, and if you do, negate the attack. You can only use the effect of this once per turn. So, activate this, search guru, set guru, use this to flip him up, search your fiendess, end your turn. You now have a guru face up attack, a hidden city activated, and fiendess in your hand. Uh, they activate, say, Regeki, just for the case of this example. Ditch your Fiendess from hand, negate the Regeki, and set your Guru face down. They proceed to battle phase, let's say it's, I don't know, Vorse Raider, 1900 attack, normal monster, for the case of this example. They attack your Guru, you can now use Hidden City, flip Guru up, get another search, and negate the attack. 
So that's all off one card. That's pretty crazy, and that's why this deck is so good, okay? I think I did a good job explaining that, and I hope this helps you understand this kind of tr trio of uh, good cards, pretty much. Uh, a lot better. So, next card, Terraforming, just because you have to play it with this deck, it's just so good. No need to explain that. Search is a field spell for anyone who doesn't know. Uh, next card, Nemesis Archer. So, this one is usually played at 1. I'll go over the uh, ratios what, right now, actually. So, 1 or none for a Maestrix, 3 Guru, 3 Fiendus, 3 Hidden City, uh, the 1 obviously terraforming, and then 1 uh, Nemesis Archer. I've never seen it not played, whereas in Maestrix, in Maestrix, I have seen not played. So, at the start of the damage step, if this card attacks an opponent's face down defense position monster, and you control another sub terra monster, you can shuffle that opponent's monster into the deck. Um, if this card on the field is destroyed by a battle or a card effect and sent to the graveyard, uh, you can special summon a sub terra monster from the deck in defense, face down defense, or face up defense. Uh, you can only use the effect of this once, each effect of this once per turn. She's actually pretty good removal. You slow down the game enough that her attack uh, spin is actually pretty good. And then her being destroyed by battle or card effect to search is actually pretty solid. Also, she's another face up sub terra card to make this guy quick effect. Um, usually, the whole thing I showed you where it's hidden city, search this, blah blah blah. You'll also have the book of moon quick effect from him. But I didn't mention it in that combo because you wouldn't have had it. When it if you just have the one card hidden city in your hand, you wouldn't have had another face up sub terra card. But a lot of the traps, all the traps, um... They're not all the traps, but other sub terra cards are. You need another one of these pretty much to make him a quick effect, or you also have um, Cave Clash, which I'll come to in a bit. This is just a continuous spell, pretty much, and then a Maestrix coming out as well can help too. But it's kind of it's kind of up to you. All right, so Nemesis Archer covered now. Sub terra Nemesis Warrior and Nemesis Defender. These two I've never seen played, uh, but I'll read them to you anyway. During either player's turn, you can send a sub terra monster from your deck to the graveyard, tribute this card and at least one other monster. Uh, so the total original levels of tributed monsters equals or exceeds the level of the sub terra monster that you just sent to the graveyard, okay? And if you do, special summon that monster face up or face down defense. You can only use. No, then. So that effect is like. an egg, pretty much. Normal summon, send, lose two to summon something from the grave. I guess it, set, it summons any. Uh, sub terra monster, but it has to be h higher, right? Uh, send one sub terra monster. I guess you could send Guru, tribute him, but it has to be him and another guy. It can't just be him by himself, which is why he's not played. Um, so it's, it takes up your normal summon, and you know it's a minus as well. Guru will help you plus though. It's kind of like you could argue for it, but no one plays it. Do not play it. But I'm just trying to be devil's advocate. We'll say. Um, then his next effect is, if a sub terra behemoth monster is flipped face up while this card's in your graveyard, you can special summon this card, you can only use each effect of this guy once per turn. Like in theory he doesn't sound the worst in the world, but you don't really need him, to be honest with you. Uh, the next card then is Nemesis Defender. Uh, during another player's turn, when an opponent's effect activates... No wait, sorry. During another player's turn, when your opponent activates a card or effect, the target's exactly one set monster you control and no other cards, or when a set monster you control is targeted for an attack by an opponent's monster, you can send this card from your hand or face up on the field to the graveyard, then target another monster you control that would be an appropriate target for appropriate target. Um, that card or effect or attack now targets the new target. And then this guy says, while you control a set monster, you cannot destroy a battle or a card effect. So the idea basically is to have a set monster, right? And then have him out on the field in a defense position, right? And then whenever they try to remove the big guy, he he changes the target to himself. And yeah, I guess if there was a cool like lock, maybe something's possible. But yeah, he's not good enough to play in a competitive build. Maybe you could try and fuck around with it and get something else though. All right, next card, Cave Clash. So all sub terror monsters you control gain 500 attack and defense for each set monster on the field. Okay, so this sounds not that great. Uh, this part seems irrelevant compared to the second part, but from playing against this a good bit, um, the 500 makes a big difference, first of all, when Guru's in defense, and if it's a 1000, then he's just annoying as fuck, and then he sets shit, and all the interruptions, and the floodgates, and this actually, this 500, especially when he's flipping your stuff face down as well, he's gaining them from that as well, so you can change the battle phase or whatever, and then he's setting your stuff, and that's a less one less attack, and his stuff's harder to remove. It's actually really annoying, so that part is... Pretty good, actually. 
and then once per turn, when a sub turret monster you control inflicts battle damage to your opponent, you can target so a sub turret card in your graveyard, except for this, add it to your hand. So, this is for a grind game, right? Uh, as the game goes on, this effect gets better, and often you can find that you've gone through your three fiendess, and then this can help you add them back, and I feel like the format's going to slow down a lot with the new Megaton promos and just the way the format's been going in general, trying to make the traps stronger, trying to stop people from just ending on five monsters with no traps and no spells. Um, and I think that basically this card, as the format slows, which I predict it will, I think everyone probably predicts it will, um, I think this will be even better than already is. Some people don't play this, some people do. Uh, if you are playing it, play it at one. Next card, Subterra Final Battle, probably the best trap in the deck. Uh, well, best it's the best trap in the archetype, for sure, anyway. Uh, I'll read it to you. So, activate one of these effects. Also, after that, set this card face down instead of sending it to the graveyard. So, because of this part of the effect, resetting it, there's a big argument whether you should play this at 3 or 2. Um, I, I'm testing 3, I do enjoy it at 3. I think there's an argument for both. If you decide to play 2 or 3, I really wouldn't argue with you. Um, so... It has four effects, other than the fact that it resets itself, which is pretty fucking great, okay? Uh, change one set, sub terror monster on the field to face up, attack, or defense position. Pretty nice. Another way to abuse the field spell and the guru, of course. Uh, where am I? Here. Uh, change a face up, sub terror monster on the field to face down, defense position. Great. Uh, then, this, this effect is probably one of the most annoying. Um, attack and defense of one sub terror monster on the field become equal to their combined attack and defense until the end of the turn. Oh god, I remember, okay, I'm getting flashbacks to when at Nationals I was coming close to time, I went to attack and they activated this, I couldn't get around his guru then and I took life points, life point damage from attacking him and then lost by like whatever it was, like a thousand or something in time. Fuck me, I was annoyed and that was... But also, you know, that's my problem for not knowing the deck. Anyway, can come up, okay? Especially with time, and especially because this deck is a bit of a slow control. I'm not saying to try and win in time, but it'll come up, it'll happen. Um, really good. And then the last effect just makes Guru, again, really hard to move. And then last effect this turn, activated effects of sub terror cards cannot be negated. This actually is really good, and I'll mention it again later, because it's something I really want to talk about. It's really cool. Um, play this at 2 or 3, it's up to you. Next card, Subterra Succession. This card is pretty much never played. I'll read it to you anyway. Activate one of these effects. Also, after that, set this card face down instead of sending it to the graveyard. Pretty cool. Uh, send a monster from your hand or face on the field to the graveyard. And if you do, add a flip monster from your deck to your hand with the same attribute but a different name. They're all Earth, by the way. Um, as that monster... As that monster before it was... Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. So, yeah. so just add a monster with a different name, same attribute, pretty much. Um... That comma seems in a weird spot. Uh, send a flip monster from your hand or face upon the field to the graveyard. And if you do, add one monster from your deck to your hand as that monster... God, I'm after fucking... I'm being... I'm concentrating now on those commas too much. Send a flip monster from your hand or face upon the field to the graveyard. If you do, add a monster from your deck to your hand. The same attribute, but a lower original level level as that monster before it was sent to the graveyard. You can only activate this once per turn. Like, this one doesn't even sound terrible, but... I don't know, it searches Flip Monsters, which means it can search Guru, which isn't terrible, honestly. But you have to get rid of a monster to do it. The fact that it stays in the field makes it feel like it's not really a neg, though, and then Guru will get each plus as well. Same attribute, different name. You'd have to be playing a few targets, though, if this for this to be any good, because like you don't really want to be ditching your Fiendess. So maybe in a build with more of the big guys, but you don't really need it. Um... Yeah, next card then. This one also played pretty much at zero, um, but I'll read it anyway. You can banish a sub monster from your graveyard. For the rest of the turn, face down monsters you control cannot be destroyed by card effects. Uh, and your opponent cannot target them with card effects. That's pretty decent. This one doesn't reset itself, notice that, just saying. Uh, if this card in the field is destroyed by card effect, you can add a sub monster from your deck to your hand. You can banish this card from your graveyard, then target a sub monster you control, change it to face down defense position. Um, I quite like this one, like, it kind of reminds me of, um, what's it called, Waking the Dragon or whatever, obviously probably less good though, it's kind of dead, protection, and then if it gets popped, it searches, like, and then you can also banish from the graveyard to set a sub terror monster you control, it's like not the best card, but I, I don't know, if people are siding in a load of back row destruction, it's not the worst either, but probably you could just side better things, 
So yeah, moving on. Next thing. Uh, this obviously isn't a sub terror card, but I'm going to read it because it's really, really good in this deck. It just makes it so that your opponent can only summon once or twice even a turn, and then you're... That just makes it so much easier for sub terror to just control the game. So, each player can only control one monster of each type. Uh, if, a mo if a player controls two or more monsters of the same type, they must send some to the graveyard so they control no more than one of that type. Uh, no one needs to tell you that this card is really good, uh, especially in this deck, seeing as you have a one card negate, and then also he's a. You also have the flip, and then you have also your other traps, and yeah, it's really annoying, okay? Definitely play this, okay? People play this at two or three, it's up to you. Uh, next card I think is a cool tech card. I really like the idea of this. Um, I'm playing three of this card because of this. And basically skill drain, for anyone who doesn't know, pay a thousand life points. Uh, the effects of all monsters on the field are negated, while those monsters are facing on the field. But their effects can still be activated. So what you can do basically with this on the field is negate everything. Yes, that's kind of annoying, but you can then use uh, Subterra Final Battle, and it says, this turn, the activated effects of Subterra cards cannot be negated. So you can basically sit under this, and then every turn activate this, and use its last effect, and basically kind of play through. It's really, really good. Honestly, I really like it. You can activate it on your own turn, and then activate it on your opponent's turn. It's just stupid. It's really cool. It's really fun. If you don't like the combo, you can cut this, and then if you want to cut the third one of this, it's up to you. But yeah, the last card that I'm going to read is Subterra Behemoth. I've, this has taken longer than I thought it would, but yeah. Gains attack equal to the combined original levels of the sub terror monsters used for its link summon times 100. Uh, during your main phase, you can send one flip monster from your deck to the graveyard, and if you do, splash summon a monster from your hand or face down defense, in face down defense, uh, to a monster on this card points to. You can only use the effect of this once per turn. Once per turn, if a monster this card points to is flipped face up, add a monster, add a flip monster from your deck to your hand. This one is kind of for more if you're playing loads of the big guys, which. Most people won't. You do not play this card. And yeah, that is that. So I'm going to show you some builds now. Uh, three or f I guess four. I'll fly through them though. So this is kind of your basic build in general. Uh, Guru, Fiendess, Archer, Behemoth, Hand Traps, Field Spell, Searcher for the Field Spell. Uh, keep in mind when I got this uh, list, the terraforming was at two. So I just threw this in as a third. I personally don't like this in the main because discarding is tough. Uh, it's dead against a lot of matchups. The format's really diverse. Personally, I would not main this, but yeah. Uh, Pot of Indulgence, uh, great in this deck. Your extra deck is never used except for basically these. This is, by the way, I forgot, I actually wrote this down. This is from Demir Subastic, Subasic, top, four, top 64 at North American World Championship Qualifier, um, just to give him the credit. Call by the Grave, three final battle, three, uh, there can be only one, two compulsory. The way he was using compulsory was to bounce his own guru to his hand to kill um, Mystic Mine, which was pretty cool. And also it has other uses too, so that's cool. But also now that Metaverse is not there, you could consider playing something else. Uh, Manhunt, or Crackdown, sorry, really strong, really good in general. Uh, you can basically take, you can manhunt, take an opponent's thing, which is very important, and, or crackdown, sorry, and take an opponent's thing and then set it with um, Guru, and then when this is popped, you can keep the monster, which is really cool. Uh, these are basically just targets for Cyber Dragon. Uh, against Orcus, you can get rid of their whole field or whatever using th this. So it's like having more super polys, and then this guy can get rid of extra deck monsters for other matchups. Uh, loads of super poly targets, and then this, uh, Lancia. Uh, shared ride, fair enough. Evenly matched for when you're going second. Uh, basically, this deck doesn't really have many ways to come back from being behind, so evenly matched helps with that. And then full house was really cool, actually. Uh, target two face up spell and traps on the field, and three set spells on the field destroy them. So this sounds really situational and really bad, but he was saying that basically it helps him with his worst matchup, which was Sky Strikers. So you take away their field spell and multi roll, and then pop three sets, and it's pretty cool. And then it also comes up against True Draco, so yeah, I like that. Um, I'm going to try and speed through these now because you kind of get the gist. Same shit, no Umatrix, less hand traps. He's playing Cave Clash, he's playing, super, again, uh, minus the terraforming, added a Super Poly. Um, he's playing three Final Battle again. Three Crackdowns this time, loads of Strikes, or Solemns, and then, by the way, this was at one at the time as well, so keep that in mind. 
And then Skill Drain for the combo with uh, Final Battle. He's playing... Uh, oh, I'll read the name of this guy too. So this guy, only, all I got was Ranko, his name was. This was Top 64 German Nationals. Um, yeah, loads of different Super Poly targets. This one's for Sky Striker, he said. Uh, Machine and Dragon, so you can use Guru and this. And then this is what I love. You can play targets for Crackdown, basically, when you take a Sky Striker card or a... Um, you take the Link 2 Orchist monster, I always forget her name for some reason. And then the extra deck's pretty normal, except uh, Imperial Order, I think is definitely good in this deck. Really good. And then deck 3, same shit, basically pretty basic. Two of each of these hand traps, uh, Ghost Ogre included, which is pretty cool. Um, third duality, he's playing Cosmic Cyclones, uh, two of Final Battle. Two crackdown and a judgment. This was at one at the time. Again, this was at two at the time. This was at two at the time. Keep that in mind. I don't know. Oh shit! I didn't mean to do that. Don't know why this is here, but I guess it was a joke or something like that. Gem knights in a light. That's obviously not going to come up. And then the extra deck's pretty basic. So, and then the last one is my build that I personally like. Um, not playing uh, this in the main. I took the cyber dragon idea. I really like it. I'm trying these and. Yeah, if you want to pause here and take this, you can. Uh, make any changes, obviously. I cut warning for another judgment now that's at three, and yeah, if Deku Poseca ever comes back, I'd like to be played a lot, I'd main this at three, probably. And yeah, that is that. I've been going on way longer than I thought I would, but hopefully I helped you learn the deck, learn some of the combos. It's pretty straightforward once you know that one thing with the, you know, Hidden City, Guru, Fiendess, um, and then hopefully trying to get his uh, quick effects set effect as well. And yeah, that is that. So hopefully you enjoyed. Um, again, a reminder about the giveaway. And yeah, drop a like if you liked. Subscribe if you want to see more. And thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.